In this devotional, I'm going to share with you three thoughts from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 10 through 15, where I'll ask the question, how is the church built? First Corinthians chapter 3, verses 10 through 15 says, According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation, and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care of how he builds upon it. For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become manifest, for the day will disclose it because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. Paul is writing to the church at Corinth, and he is absolutely amazed that there is a bunch of division taking place in the church. It is really startling and upsetting to him because he sees the entire church as built upon the foundation of Christ Jesus and everybody working within that same sort of idea that since we're all brothers and sisters in Christ, then our work in the church should be one of unity. But as he sees the divisions taking place there in the church at Corinth, he tries to correct this error of division by enforcing the idea that the church is built up by multiple people working together upon the unified faith in Christ that they all share. With this in mind, here are three thoughts from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 10 through 15, answering the question, how is the church built? Thought number one, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the foundation upon which the church is built. And anyone who tries to build their church upon something other than the fact that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, well, you're not building a church. I don't know what you're building, but you're not building the church. And this is something that we all need to realize and embrace, that if the foundation that we have, that we're building our church upon, isn't Christ Jesus, then we're simply not building a church. We're building some other sort of thing, some kind of civic organization or religiously minded club, something like that. And we should realize that such an organization, while not inherently bad, is not the church. And because it's not the church, it isn't going to be a lasting thing. It's going to be something else entirely. And we need to be aware of that. So Jesus Christ is the one and only foundation upon which the church is built. Thought number two, work. Paul is talking here and he says that everyone's going to be building upon this foundation of Jesus Christ. and. That means that everyone is going to be working and they're all going to be working and they might be working with different materials. They might be working with different levels of ethic, different levels of skill. And what he points out is that we're all going to be working together. It isn't just a place where you go and gather to simply receive from one another. There is receiving that takes place, but that isn't the whole of it. There's also giving that is a part of it. There is work to be done, and that work is done by all of the members of the church. They work together. And while some people's work is gonna be complementary to other people's work, and not everyone's work is gonna be exactly the same, we need to realize that we're working together upon the same purpose, which is the building up of Christ's church, so that more and more people can come to recognize the great glories of what Christ has done. This is the purpose of the church, to gather together to preach the gospel, to share it with one another and with those who have yet to hear it. And as we work together, even if we're working with different materials and at different skill levels, what we will find is that the church is being built up because this is the Lord's will for his people. Thought number three, reward and loss. Paul says that everyone is going to work and they're all going to work with their own materials that they have available to them and they're all going to be putting forth the effort, but at the end, you will know who 
was working wholeheartedly and who was working half-heartedly. At the end, you will know those who were making a positive contribution to what was going on and those who are actually weakening what's happening. Because ultimately, this thing that you're building will be tested by fire. It will be tested by fire. And in the end, those who have built with those strong, sturdy materials, those who have really embraced the idea of the gospel and the doctrines of Jesus Christ and have applied them faithfully, these are the folks who are building up with stone. But there will be others who are there and they're building with straw. And the straw doesn't last. It gets burned up in the fire. And that doesn't mean that those who are building with straw are lost. In fact, Paul says that himself. But what he does say is that their work will be gone. It will be gone because they were not building properly. It will be gone because they were using materials that were ineffective. And what we need to know is that there is reward for those who are working diligently and rightly within the church. And there is loss for those who are doing it in a half-hearted sort of way. This is what Paul points out when he talks about the materials that are being used to build up the church. And we should take care to make sure that we are building up Christ's church with those precious stones rather than the chaff that blows away in the wind. These three thoughts come from the assigned reading of 1 Corinthians chapters 3 and 4. If you'd like to read through the Bible with me, you can do so by subscribing to this channel, by clicking on the link in the description, or by joining the Facebook group Through the Bible, where we are reading the text of Scripture together.